And his lawyers probably went like, God damn it, couldn't you just shut up? I'm Andrei Minkov, the founder of Trademark Factory, and in this video, I'm going to share my thoughts about a lesson that Tom Brady gave us all about how what you say in public can hurt the chances of your trademark going through. So let me start by reading from the article, and you can always find the link in the description below. Tom Brady's own comments put his Tom Terrific trademark quest on shaky legal ground. Last month, Tom Brady's TEB Capital Management Company filed two applications to use his nickname for commercial purposes with U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, angering New York sports fans who believe the nickname rightfully belongs to Hall of Fame pitcher Tom Seaver, who has dementia and is no longer making public appearances. So on Thursday, the New England Patriots quarterback attempted to defuse the minor Fuhrer over his attempt to trademark his nickname for use on trading cards, posters, t-shirts, and the like. But in trying to nip the matter in the bud, Brady likely killed his chances of ever getting the right to use Tom Terrific to sell merchandise. Brady told reporters Thursday that he actually didn't like the nickname and only filed for the trademark to make sure no one used it because some people wanted to use it. I didn't want people associating uh, me with that nickname because that was something I didn't want to have happen. I don't like the nickname. I don't like when people probably give me many nice compliments. Certainly that one, Brady said. It wasn't something I was trying to do out of any disrespect or ill matter or anything like that. Here's the problem with those statements. In filing for the trademark, Brady's representatives had to declare that they had a bona fide or good faith intent to use Tom Terrific for commercial purposes and weren't simply squatting on the nickname to prevent anyone else from using it. A declaration that was directly contradicted by Brady himself on Thursday. Then the article goes to quote uh, an intellectual property attorney who was interviewed and among other things he says there is no inquiry, no trademark police to interrogate you and ask whether you intend to use the trademark for commercial purposes. Uh, and uh, he also says the applicant's sworn statement of a bona fide intention to use the mark in commerce will be sufficient evidence of good faith. But because of the very public evidence that's already out there, right, Brady's comments Thursday about his desire to not use Tom Terrific, the trademark is going to be very, very difficult to enforce. And for that reason, this is not something that can withstand any pressure, any pushback legally. So what this is about is that as the trademark application goes through, the trademark examiners are probably not going to raise this issue by themselves. Whether or not the public comments uh, contradict the declaration that uh, the applicant intends to use the mark, that it has a genuine intention to use the mark in commerce. But after the trademark registers, assuming everything goes through, then if Tom Brady notices somebody else using the mark and wants to make them stop, then they would have a great argument that would go about something like this. They would say, look, this trademark was improperly registered because at the time of registration, the applicant made it clear that they did not have a genuine intention to use the mark, and so they should not have had it registered. And because they don't have a registered trademark, and because they're not using it since we're assuming that Tom Brady is not gonna use this nickname for himself, then there's no use, the registration was improper, so there is no infringement. So that's, that's what this is all about. Not about registration, but about enforcement, and these are two separate things. So let's see, let's keep going. So more from this quote. 
This could be achieved in two ways. The challenge of that uh, trademark could be achieved in two ways. After a trademark application is approved by the USPTO, it's subject to a 30-day opposition period in which someone could step forward to contest it. In this case, citing Brady's comments that he never planned to use the trademark. Now, if that were to happen, that assumes that someone would care enough about this to actually pay the government fee and probably pay the lawyers to uh, go through the full-blown opposition proceedings. Can that happen? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but it's questionable if there is really no active use planned by Tom Brady. Because of all the people who may be upset about it, who would be the one who's going to say, you know what, I'm going to pay some money to make sure Tom Brady doesn't get it. So, but it's still, it's one of those options when during the opposition period, anyone can raise their hand and say, mm, please USPTO, don't give this trademark to Tom Brady because we think that if you were to give this trademark to Tom Brady, we our rights would be damaged. Our legal interests would be damaged. We would have a problem with that. So please, please, please don't give it to him. All right, so this is one way. Uh, and alternatively, someone could start selling Tom Terrific merchandise without his approval. And if Brady challenged this on trademark grounds, the person could point to Brady's comments and claim that his trademark is invalid because he publicly stated he never intended to use the nickname. So exactly is what I said, right? So you don't have to oppose. All you have to do is just pretend that it doesn't exist. You ignore it. And if Tom Brady chooses to go after you, then you're going to say, I don't think you can enforce this. I don't think this is a valid trademark. Uh, and uh, and, and uh, argue that. So this second strategy relies on a few assumptions. The first assumption is that it's unlikely that Tom Brady would enforce the mark given the circumstances. So they might be able to just get away with the use. And the second assumption is that that if you use it and Tom Brady goes after you, it assumes that you have enough funds and enough time on your hands to pay somebody to uh, defend yourself against that lawsuit uh, by saying that trademark is invalid. That's not an easy defense. Even if you have a public statement, it's still going to take court time. It's still going to take hours and hours and hours of preparation. So opposition period. Uh, going after the trademark during the opposition period is probably going to be a lot cheaper if, if Tom Brady were ever to, uh, in fact, sue you for trademark infringement. And, and you really never know, right? It's all about strategy. So if you want to be sure that this trademark never makes it to the registration stage, you do want to oppose it. It's going to cost a few hundred dollars of government fees. It's going to uh, you're going to spend some money on the opposition, but there is very little danger there. Uh, as opposed to being sued by Tom Brady, that's a risk. If that happens, that's probably going to cost a lot more to defend. Yeah, and of course, the third possibility also highlighted by the, uh, the attorney is that the Tom Terrific trademark application either will die on the vine in the wake of all the bad publicity it has generated or face a legal challenge if it's indeed issued. Uh, Brady's team uh, could also file paperwork to withdraw the application. In any case, Brady seemed more than hopeful Thursday that this matter would simply fade away. I was trying to keep people from using it. And then it got spun around to something different uh, than what it was, he said. Good lesson learned, and I'll try to do things a little different in the future. Now, if you are really interested how to do this next time, here's how you do it. If there's a legal issue, you don't go to the journalist with statements unless those statements have been reviewed by your lawyers. Because if you really wanted to abandon the mark, if you really wanted to show the world that you're not interested in it, you do it by voluntarily withdrawing a mark, by taking the step 
that says, I am no longer interested in this mark. And then it's all clear. Your lawyers don't have to uh, scratch their heads trying to figure out, okay, what do we do now? Uh, your uh, uh, trademark examiner who's going to look at the trademark application is not going to be facing the dilemma of, well, do I ignore the statement or do I follow the statement? What do I do? Uh, and uh, just makes everyone's life easier. If you're not interested in the trademark, abandon the trademark, withdraw from the trademark and be done with it. Uh, and if you don't plan to uh, withdraw, if you actually intend to keep that brand to yourself, then don't make statements that make this legally problematic. So again, before you make any statement that has something to do with your trademarks, ask somebody who understands trademark law. Now, I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, make sure you subscribe now, get notified whenever the next video goes live. And until then, I will see you in the next video.